All right, I'm ready for another hour of pain. And lest you believe I'm recording this a few hours after the last part, well, I got a hat now. So this is a, what is this, a toque for you Canadian people, right? <laughs> or a beanie down here in America, because we don't know what we name things. It has to be related to food, probably. So, all right, I had a couple things that I changed, of course, as is tradition, but I didn't want to go too far or else I wanted to record the stuff, so... Just look at what we got here. I'm probably just going to make some helper functions here and try to maybe get started on the create file function to actually make something for the open system call if they pass the oCreate flag in. But I'll make some helper functions and stuff. But before that, I'll just go through these new things here, which I thought I had in this file, and I did not. It's in the other one. It starts with fs. So I needed to set the current inode, or at least it would help if I set that before we get down here and we're not starting at root. Otherwise, when I go to make this thing down here, I'm not going to know where to start to grab the relative parent directory from, maybe among other things as well. But I need to at least have that set if we're not starting at root, if we're given a path that, you know, does not start with a slash, if it just starts with like folder A, I guess we could assume we're in the current directory. Or if, you know, dot dot slash, anything that doesn't start with an initial slash, I'm going to assume we're talking about starting from wherever the process that we're calling this from, wherever that is in our file system, which would be set in our current directory inode, which is, uh, yeah, at the top of this file. So I'm just setting it to there. Else we are not starting at root, assume we're starting at the current directory. So I'm just setting that to start off. That's all I have here. There was something down here. Yeah, I don't need this. This comment doesn't need to be duplicated there. So, okay, I'll probably try and replace, you know, like this stuff searching through a, a file in the inodes and everything. I'll try to replace this stuff in here with a helper function this hour, hopefully, but we'll find out. I go pretty slow usually, so maybe not. Maybe not. So what did I do in here under open? If the file does not exist, so this had <laughs> the condition if id is zero and not flags, but I'm checking for that here. So I didn't need to do both. I just need to check if it doesn't exist and we don't have the create flag error, otherwise go on. So that's what this is doing. Now, I'll try to make this stuff maybe this part as well. What do I have for a new thing? Cast a pointer? Yes, so... Temporary file table entry, the address there. I did not have this UN8 here. It was just this, and that draws an error because this is a UN32. I need to cast that to the right type here. The file table entry address is an 8-bit pointer, so we'll cast that to a pointer. Other than that, if they're doing appending, it is not file size and bytes, it is just inode size and bytes. So I had file size and bytes, that's not correct. We'll make that size bytes there, which I should have known because I used that right up here. <laughs> but that's all right. Okay, and then after this, this is new, I added this. So at the end of where I left off, I didn't actually load the file to the address in the file table entry. So I need to actually do that. So I added a call to load file, given the inode, which is a pointer, given the inode in the file table entry, that inode pointer, and given the address, cast it back to UN32, because that's what load file takes. And that returns a boolean, true or false. If it's false, the load file did not succeed, so I'll return an error, just negative one. If it did succeed, then FD would be set up here to the index, which hopefully is going to be the position in the file table that we added stuff to. Although it would be plus one here if we had to expand the table, and it is here. Well, that's till we get to the open spot. Yeah, that should be all right. That should be equal to the index where we find it. Because otherwise it'd be the open spot in the table where it is zero there, and that should be okay. All right, so those were the only new things, I believe. Yep, all right. So let's make, try to make some of these uh, helper functions here. I also wanted to add maybe a few more like defines or constants or macros for some of these things that technically could change or be changed in the future, these magic numbers, like the four there. The four is the number of extents in an inode, so I might add some, like, constants for that. 
although you went 32 is what that is, but that's fine. And that would be X tense for I. Well, we already have that number actually. That's that's in the super block. So this would be super block dot direct, and I don't have there <laughs> direct X tense per inode, I believe. Yeah, direct X tense per inode. So that's a U and eight. That's fine. We'll just add that, and then I'm multiplying by eight in a lot of places. I might make that a constant as well. That could probably be defined within file system dot h though. I can put that up here. It could be defined or it could just be eight. I guess I'll do it. It might be better to set it at runtime or as a constant that's compiled. That should be available at compile time, right? So let's say const will do uint8, that's fine. We'll say sectors per block, which is long, but it does make sense here. That will equal fs block size divided by fs sector size, which by default should be eight, but that'll be there. Is that okay? Yeah, it's all right with that. Okay, so in places of that eight that we had, and I'll have it later, not in this file, but definitely in some helper functions in the implementation file, we can replace things with that. So this would be sectors per block. That should make a little bit more sense, hopefully. Instead of just a random eight in places, you're like, what is this eight doing there, dude? used in a lot of places. And, uh, of course, these things down here I want to replace in a minute anyway, but we'll just get those done right now. There are other places and other files, of course, but that's all right. So, okay, what did I want to do as far as helper functions other than the to-dos I already have here? Well, what I started to try to do is <laughs> lay out my thoughts very slightly before actually doing them on stream. So and by stream, I mean recording. Later, I might stream, but it's a helper functions. If you can't read it, I'll make it giant. So something to get the inode from the given directory, from a given directory's inode, an inode for a directory type, given a file name to search for. So this will be used like for searching for the relative parent directory. If we give this you know, with a current directory and a name of dot dot, it would return the inode for that dot dot, the parent directory. And also something to return the inode of the last directory in a path, pretty much. I call it the parent inode of the last file. So something like folder ABC would return the inode for folder B, which is the parent directory of this file C. So given a path, that could also call maybe this for dot dot, I don't know. One of these could call one of these. <laughs> But I, I'm assuming we'll be traversing the path like I'm doing already in the inode from path. But we would just be returning the directory, not the last name. So it might be pretty similar. We'll find out. Um, I also need to make, yeah, the create file function for the file system. I want to try to start on that. And internally, that will probably call this. Because we need the directory parent of the file name we're creating to, you know, put that file within that directory. So I might try to do these things today. We'll see. And hopefully I can finish out open, but we'll find out. So inode from a given directory, I, directory inode, given a file name to search for, that would be good. Which is probably what I'm doing down here. Yeah, basically replacing these two things and all of this. And if I want to call it, I'll either need to forward declare or put it above here. So I'll just put it above here, I guess. I could later split this file into even more files, <laughs> depending if we want to have like just load, save, rename and stuff versus these helper functions and things. I don't know. Get inode for a given string slash file name contained in a given directory inode. So this will be returning an inode t. 
what did I call it? <laughs> inode for name and directory. Yeah, that's not really ambiguous, so that works. I don't I don't think that's too hard to understand. Inode for name and directory. And I'll give it either a pointer or a regular inode to a directory. I'm working with plain inodes here, so if stuff ends up taking a lot of memory later on the call stack, then we can definitely switch to using pointers, or if it makes things more elegant later. But right now I'm just sending the whole data, all these values around, and that's all right. So we'll say directory inode, and we'll have a character pointer. And until proven differently, I'll try to make these constant. For the file name, we'll say, the return inode t or whatever, whatever we have here. We'll say by default it's gonna be bad. So how do we do that? Well, we're gonna do things similar to what we have here, but let's say we had a file call here. So instead of this, we called something different. The inode for name and directory, and this will be replacing this stuff. So this will be the current inode. inode for name and directory. I guess we'd set it where we are at, right? Because we're assuming we're in a directory as we start. We don't have the parent, we're looking for it. But dot dot would be the second thing within this current directory anyway. So yeah, we can send it there. We'll find it within this directory's inode and we'll be looking for dot dot. So that should work. I'm doing this, okay. We will have to loop over all these. Put that node up there. Let's say we copy this stuff. Just as a start. And we'll have to return it from the sector. We will have to do that, and that's the last thing. That does make that one simpler, which is true, because we're just moving all the logic here. And then this one down here would be doing the same thing, but searching for the given name after we find the end of the name, or set the end of the name here. So instead of that, we would be doing current inode, I guess given the current inode. Yeah, because we're traversing down the path here. We grab it for the name string. So that would be all right. That would return from there. I'll probably copy this up there, even though it's duplicated, and I'll just remove what I don't need. Okay, but that is a lot shorter in here, which is good. And we'll just move the stuff up here. Okay. Let's get all the indentation right first. All right, so how are we gonna do this? Let's just put that to do there. We'll have to loop over everything in the block, in the inode. So this extent zero would turn into an I probably. So we need one loop to go over all the extents, and then we're gonna check the sectors within all the blocks, within all the extents. And then instead of doing this, we're gonna do what I did down below. Actually, just kind of should have just copied the second part. <laughs> should do bounds checkings. This will search for the name that we send in. And the name is going to be the file name as the input to this. If we didn't find it, we'll return that. Otherwise, we'll load it. And we'll get the ID modulo. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, so we just need to add loops around that pretty much. That's not too bad. So let's say we have a loop, we have i equals zero, i would be less than super block, 
direct X tense for inode, which is going to be four for what I'm working with, but that's all right. Uh, get this inode for sector. We'll probably return this data. Maybe do that. Well, actually, that would probably be inside the loop. And then it'll probably say <laughs> something like reach the end of non-void function. So yeah, I probably should keep that return in there just in case. All right, yeah, in case we reach here and we haven't found it. Did not find file in directory. This current inode would be what we're returning instead. So we'd return the data, which would be as big as an inode, contained at wherever we load the sector, Write one modulo sectors per block. Yes, because that would be the right inode offset from the sector that we loaded it to. Yeah, okay. So x tent is to be x tent i. And we need to search all the blocks, not just the first block. We need to search for length blocks starting at the first block. Hmm. So how would we do that? Search the current. Um, say search inodes, extents, data blocks. <laughs> for file name. So we'll load the block to the temp block. So we need other ones. Yeah, we need, we're gonna have nested loops in here. Sorry for you big O aficionados. I don't know <laughs> how to improve beyond n cubed algorithms. So that's probably what we're gonna aim for here today. Maybe we have something like, how many blocks are we gonna have? We're gonna have to loop through all the blocks in the inode. So I'll just set an full int size to be safe. Say J is less than this inode's length in blocks. So I might need another, a different thing here. I might, I might set an intermediate variable equal to this stuff. And this won't be current directory inode. This will be just directory inode, that input. So we need to get the first block from that. Let me write that out first. That might make more sense. So we have the first block, and first block and length and blocks are both U and 32, so probably what I can do is set J to that. Because that would be contiguous on disk from the first block up to first block plus, plus length and blocks, maybe minus one if it's zero based, I forget. But that'll be the number of blocks we have to check for this part of the file, for this extent in the inode. So yeah, I'll probably set J equal to this, and it'll be less than the length and blocks. Extent I length in blocks. J plus plus. So that'll give this number here. So we can just do J or name it something better than J, but <laughs> we'll do that in a second. We'll load the next thing to the temp block. So load next block to check. And that would be the bounds check by going up until the lengthen blocks. We'll load additional ones as needed. So then we grab an entry to that block. While we haven't found the name, keep going. If we didn't find it, then we'll have to search the next block. So I'll probably just iterate here. Did not find the file in this block. Keep checking. If it doesn't equal zero, we'll probably do some other stuff. If it does equal zero right here, I'll just iterate, which is continue and see. 
and go to the next one. We'll load it up, we'll check it. So if we haven't found it, we'll keep checking, but we could go to the end and maybe get a page fault or some other memory access violations later. So we should check probably how many entries it has, but I don't have a I don't have data for that. How would I do that? I think I do that in like load file kind of. I'm checking for the total blocks. I'm thinking I could check where it's not equal to zero, but if we have gaps within the directory entries, if we like add and delete stuff from a directory later, we'll have gaps, which the ID could be zero in the middle of it. So I don't necessarily want to stop early for those because that wouldn't be right. So how do I check all of the data, all of the directory entries available and stop short of, you know, going way beyond where we need to? I'm not sure if I can effectively. I don't have anything that says like number of directory entries. No, the I know it's pretty, pretty short. <laughs> We could take the total number of blocks, though, and stop short. I mean, we could do that. That would be okay. And total blocks was bytes to blocks. File size, let's do that. I'll just copy that here. So we know we've read one block. We can stop early for some reason. If we read all of them, we don't have to keep going. I guess we could do that. So in total blocks above zero, you loaded one block here. Although I guess we would just do that, right? Yeah. Just so we can stop early if needed, maybe. That might not be needed, but that's all right. How do I stop directory entry early? I wonder. We'd probably have to have the number of bytes within a block, <laughs> which is going to be the, the file size, which is 4096. Um, so do I need another counter that says we're so much through the block? Because otherwise this is going to keep going and check in, which is not, we, we're gonna have to end this early. So I'll probably need some other like terminator there for that. Need like the number of directory entries, right? Let's say directory entries per block. And that would be the block size divided by size of directory entry, which is 64. So it should be, um, it should be eight and 512 times eight for 4,096. So it should be 64, but I'll just put this here anyway. Size of directory entry T, we'll do that. And I would have to run a counter then every time. Let's put um directory entry and <laughs> directory entry count or something. Just have a count right here. Count equals zero. String compare not equals zero and count. So this would be a good situation to use like a for loop, right? Well, we have directory entry here which means I need to have it like up here somewhere probably because I don't have that as a global. No, so let's do that here. Initialize that. And that way we can do like a for loop with this. So for directory entry equals to that. compare not equals zero. I'll do and. Count would be less than directory entries per block. Did that a little bit. And then the last one would be directory entry plus plus. Iterate to the next one. All right, 
So that way we'll stop before going beyond the end of the block, which might be the end of all the data blocks or somewhere that's otherwise invalid in memory. We don't want to do that. So I'll stop that first. I don't like this syntax, but it, because this is a, uh, it's not great. This reads a little awkwardly, but I think that works. Not, um, not that though. Yeah, like that. This would be an empty for loop. That's why that's very awkward, because <laughs> we are searching until it equals. This is a this is some Zalgo C code right there. That's all right. But if at the end of that we didn't find it, then yeah, we'll continue. Otherwise, we did find it. So we know directory entry should be pointing right to it. Yeah, because we found the thing with the name so that should be pointing to it. So we'll load inode for found file. Set from start of all on disk. The directory into your ID, that should be fine. Temp sector, read with retry, and we'll get the inode from that sector. That'll be within this inner loop. Yeah, okay. And we need the outer loop for all the extents. This will be all the blocks within this extent. And total blocks is outside, yes. Just so the total blocks needs to be outside this so it doesn't get reset between calls to this loop, between iterations of this loop. This will subtract everything within this extent, the next time subtract everything within that extent, so on and so forth. This is only the direct extents. I need to check the double, the single and double indirect as well. And I'm lazy and putting that off till later, <laughs> which I shouldn't do. One of these days I should do that. But that's all right. I should probably name this like next block or something. Or just block. But that's too generic of a name. Let's be verbose. Might as well. We will set count equal to zero every time though. Because we're doing this. So this needs to be count plus plus as well. This is an empty for loop because it's doing all that. If we found it good. If we didn't, we'll load it and we'll return that data from temp sector. That ID modulo eight sectors per block. Okay. That seems to be all right. I know T size bytes, total blocks. Is that not a pointer? I know it undeclared. Oh yeah, directory I know. Duh. Invalid type because it is not a pointer. I need variable directory entry. Did I not just use that? 94, oh, that's 84. That's down here, that's different. Directory entries per block. This is a constant, right? Yeah. So that could be in um, that could be a constant in the regular, the regular one here. Like we're doing this. Let's do directory entries per block. That'd be the block size divided by size of directory entry, which is down there. So might not work here because it hasn't been declared yet at this point. I don't think that will work, but I can at least have it as a constant in there. And what is it? Is it uh, G capital U? Yeah. There we go. Let's see. Do we get an error for that? Because it isn't defined yet. Undeclared. That's all right. Find that after directory entry T. Put that right there. All right, and we have unused, but that's okay. Okay, so that should work. Checking all the blocks, loading the inode, returning the inode for that specific block. Temp sector and block are in here. Yep, those are in there. Okay. Last inode in the given path. We're not using directory entry anymore. Is that what it said? 92 
keep pressing eight instead of nine. This, that's up there. Yep, okay, we'll get rid of that. That's good. That makes this function read a lot better. So we're gonna search for the relative parent directory and the current directory, which is the current inode at this point. If we set a new one, then we get a new one there. And we continue on and get it for that within that inode. Yep, okay. There's probably a different way I could write this function to be recursive. I'm just not smart enough and I haven't read all of SICP yet, so I'm not big brained enough to do that. <laughs> Bad joke, but you know, that's at least simpler than it was before. So I'm gonna say that works. I'm gonna mark uh, whatever I did for this. This should be done. So I also wanna get the parent inode of the last file or directory in a path. Let's work on that. That's similar to this one, except instead of the last one, we have a parent inode. So I would just stop if we haven't found a slash, I guess, maybe. But it probably, I'm wondering if I can do it from this, from this function somehow. I don't think I can. I just want to make sure I want to return the last one that is a directory, not the last file. But okay, get last inode. We'll say git inode for last file and given path. And I'm going to copy all of that. Get inode for parent directory of last file and given path. So given folder A and all this nonsense, and let's say folder B, file C, I want to return folder B's inode. So instead of inode for path, parent inode from path. So what do I call this, inode from path? Yeah, that's fine. We can call it parent inode from path. I think that's relatively easy to understand. It's the parent inode at the end of the given path. And we'll do the same thing here, current inode. While this is not there, we're doing this. So I'm setting the inode for here. Inode for the name and the directory. So if we end here, I guess I could do the same thing. And then if we end on not a directory type, but a file type of file, or just, yeah, anything that isn't a directory type for the file, we can just send back a previous one that would be the directory, because that would be the last one that we found. So let's say current inode and previous inode. And we'll set them equal, like I guess wherever we set this right now. I don't need to do this, but... I don't think I need to do this in all cases, but right now we're just gonna do that. And if I do it there, then I just need to do it once. So that's fine. Initial containing directory, just say parent. So we find the current inode here. And we know this is a directory. So I would set it again here, I believe. Yeah. I'd set it basically to all these, but I don't want to set it for all of them. I just know these two, these are. This one we're not changing. This one we are, because we know it is a directory. This one we won't necessarily change. We'll say if current, I always do that. If current inode, dot type is not file type directory. Let's just say it is. If it is file type directory, I'll set the previous inode equal to the current inode. Because we'll search for the new previous inode. If it's not the file type directory, this will not equal this one in case we're going on. So then, then at the end, we can say if the current inode's type is not, well, if it is a directory, then we'll return the dot, the, um, the current inode. If it is a directory, we'll return the current inode, else 
we'll return the previous inode. Turn last found directory. I think that's all right. Does that make sense? It is a bit of duplication, but a lot of duplication, but that's all right. So we're setting what we're previously on. We're on a directory currently. Every time we find a directory, we want to set it. If it's relative, definitely here, it's not gonna change because we're still on the current one. And then down here, once we get the new directory for the next thing in the path, if that is a directory, we'll set this. If it's not a directory, then current inode will be the file, but previous inode will be the last directory that was found. I think that makes sense. And then we'd return that. So that should be all right. So that's a uh, parent inode from path. So that would be this one. I don't know if I want word wrap on this. So look better without that. That's fine. Okay, and then maybe we can create a file here because that will need the parent inode. Some other things may need the parent the parent inode as well. That's the only thing I have in there. Okay, so let's go back and look at, well, first let's make sure it, it compiles. It does, okay. Let's also make sure, I wonder if I can run it from here. Yeah, okay, that makes it easier. Oh, it doesn't boot. Oh, that's not good. That's not good at all. Is it because I'm within there? That's not good. Can't shut down from there. So, all right. That's how you know you broke something. Probably have a misplaced pointer or reference somewhere, but that's all right. Let's debug. Let's add. I think dash D is debug and dash little D is other things like CPU reset, something like that. I don't remember exactly, but dash D would be a log file. Or I think that just enables debugging. I don't remember. I don't think I have man on here. Oh, I do. Okay, dash D. Log file. Otherwise, it would log to standard error. Okay, so I don't need that. Dash little d would be filter debug output to a range of addresses. But I think you can enable... Other things, let's search for debug. Watchdog action, debug equals n. There's different ways of doing this. I just don't remember how. <laughs> like specifically debugging for CPU resets for triple faults. I know you can, you can monitor for that. I just don't remember exactly how you do that. But I think this might work. Yeah, see that'll, the initial, load is a triple fault. But if I do this, it should give us another one, yeah. So we know this was a CPU reset. Uh, CR2, I think, is the address that caused it, which is zero. So we might have been jumping to null or something. Something was equal to null. These don't mean anything to me right now. Still in ring zero, isn't that nice? <laughs> That's only for resets. Maybe there's another one, because that that's looks... I mean, it resets after it triple faults. I just don't remember what you call it. It might be triple fault. It is not. Oh, here we go, log items. CPU state before it resets. Registers before... I don't know what that is. TV? Translation something? Is that, does that mean triple fault? I don't know. I don't think so. I thought CPU reset would do that. Usually it says though. Usually it'll say like triple fault. It won't say CPU reset every single time. But this time it did. <laughs> so that doesn't help me very much, does it? Uh, that's all right. Uh, okay, so where was I doing? What is going on in the kernel? Did I mess with that? Did I mess with that and not remember? I know I had debugging before. No, I took that out. We know it's not getting to the kernel. So it could be some malloc stuff somewhere. It could be initializing, could be printf. I don't know, what would it be? We'll just see. I know it, it doesn't even get to like printing the stuff out, so I'm assuming it's with these, maybe. 
open file table and inode table, possibly. Malloc size of, well, I'm not filling the table with anything, am I? Maybe that's part of the issue. I'm just getting basic memory here. We should, we should probably fill it with something, right? How many bytes? Probably this many bytes. I mims that down here, yeah. Buffer byte and length, yeah. So the byte I wanna do, we'll just do zero and that'll be the length. Let's, yeah, let's initialize that table actually in case it's trying to look through garbage memory and not finding zeros, that would help, wouldn't it? <laughs> not that it's actually loading that, but. I'll set the initial value here. The data at open inode table. Yeah, it's going to be an empty inode. The data at open file table will be an empty entry. I think that's okay. It could be with these stuff. It could be with setting that explicitly. It could be with a bunch of stuff. Usually if it's a page fault, it'll tell me. But it could be some other exception I'm not handling currently. Which is fun. But I do know it triple faults. Oh, the fun part, <laughs> print debugging and uh, not learning GDB, so we can't do this effectively. Well, we can see where it's at. Where are they at, where are they at, where are they at, though? We'll just have a sentinel value there, whatever you call it. See if it gets there. Doesn't even get there. How big is the file? Five blocks 42 now. The kernel is at nine blocks. That should be okay. Hopefully. Maybe I'm outrunning, like loading the kernel or something. I shouldn't be, but. So we have the total number of blocks would be nine. That would be okay. This one I'm reading and writing all of them at once. Lengthen blocks times the sectors. This is where I'm starting. So nine times eight, that's not that big. That's 72. So I'm trying to think that'd be 72 sectors, which is less than 255. So it shouldn't, should not be an issue with loading sectors if it happens on the load sector stuff. But it was after I added this code, which is interesting. So maybe affecting some of this stuff up here is not working. What includes impl? Is it a few things? Maybe that's messing with it. If it's not included in only one place and it doesn't know what memory addresses are getting linked in each specific file that uses it or is linked with it, maybe that would be an issue. Interrupts has it, but the kernel has, well, the syscalls file. The kernel has that, so that's all just one. That's one file. These both will have it. One translation unit. Git, I don't really care. Third stage is the other thing. Okay. That may be where we're messing up. Because obviously we're not doing this, but I can see if we're actually loading there. That's dead beef. Let me give that another thing. Uh, I'll do cafe beef. <laughs> Delicious steak at your local barista. So it does reach that. It does reach that point. Okay, so it would be on the call to the kernel then. Of course. Just, which probably means that the kernel isn't being loaded. So now it's at the scratch address, which is at 3000. So we can look for that again. We look at 
We have data there. I don't remember. I don't remember if those are characters. Yeah, we have the dot and dot dot. So if I look for say 20 characters at 3200, we have malloc test. I know the kernel's after this stuff. 2240. Yeah, so the kernel's there. So it should find the kernel. It is reading stuff into memory correctly. But this isn't going to the kernel. Which is annoying, because I don't know where it's messing up. <laughs> Could be setting these values up here too, it doesn't like. I don't know, I might have to make these static. But if they're static, then they can't be extern within the other thing. So I could have to set like global addresses and just call these or have these be connected to those if it's if that's the reason these are messing up on boot. I do not know. I might set these values below though. Like the current the, the current and max open files would probably be better when I initialize the table. I mean that would make sense. Because I'm using max down here. So maybe that's bad. Current open files, we'll set B3. Just copy all that. The max open inodes will also be 256, and current open inodes will be zero. Do that. Okay, this I don't know. File virtual address, I mean, that's just kind of what we're doing there. I mean, I could set that within when we're initializing though. It might be a generic file system variable we can set there. Okay, I doubt that did anything at all. It does load though. It gets a bigger window this time, that's closer. So it doesn't hit this point, is it before we do this? Because then I can see if it hits dead beef, we know what the issue is. It's not, okay. Is it before we do anything? At least I have fast iteration. I thought I proved that it did go to the kernel, so. Although we could, we could prove that again, actually. Because we know where it's supposed to be loaded within the third stage, so I could check that again. Yeah, I'll have to check that again. Okay. This is fun. So before we do this... It's not dead beef if it's cafe beef. Cafe face. <laughs> We'll see, the kernel should be loaded to three gigs, I know. And it should be loaded to one meg, although we're removing one to four meg from the mapping. It should still be there in memory, however. I don't think we're clearing that out. Maybe we are. But the kernel should be loaded to three gig. Virtual address. So we know this is there. It says face beef up here, cafe face rather. I think he can do info mem for something. Read write. So it, uh, I know I've mapped in the kernel. The kernel's here, at three gig to three gig plus four meg. The kernel's also zero to one meg is uh, at this point is memory mapped. This might be the length. Maybe the length is only one meg for all this. Yeah, zero to one meg is one meg. This is four meg. This is however big this is. That's just like the rest of memory there. 
Okay, and I know I gave it 128 megs of memory, so it could be if I'm using stuff too high that it hasn't allocated, I might need to give more memory to QEMU. That could be part of the issue. I'm asking for too much for it <laughs> to try and emulate at the moment. What else? But the kernel should be at 3 gig. Like, it should be at this address. So, C, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If I say... If there's any data there, it doesn't look like there's data there. It's all zeros. So the kernel has not been loaded at this, at this point, and that is why it's failing. So why is the kernel not loaded there? We should have loaded the kernel where? Somewhere? Initialize virtual memory? Load font from disk. We loaded the kernel initially to one meg. I do. I didn't do that. Didn't know if I repressed Control Z or not. So, is there anything at one meg, a hundred thousand, and hex? Cannot access memory because it's not mapped anymore. Okay. <laughs> of course. This is what debugging is like, and this is why I usually cut it out because I don't know what I'm doing. So I don't have a debugger to run, which I should set that up. So at this point, it should be mapped. Should be able to look at that. And it's all zeros, so I guess it's not mapped. I wonder why it's not being mapped. Did I mess with load file? I don't think I did. Scratch block address. We know that is correct. We should find the name of the kernel. We have kernel.bin, so it should find that. I'm looking only for the length up to that, which is six. Bootloader first inode address. That should be where the inodes are. Maybe it's not there. Bootloader first inode address. That is where, that's at B000. So how many inodes do I have at this point? I have this many, so I have one. I have 11 files. Kernel's the last one. So it's beyond 200 hex from the start. That would be beyond one sector. So how many sectors did I load? I'm loading eight to here. First inode address. How much data is loaded at the first inode address, I wonder? Maybe it's more than it used to be. Although we can see if we have, if we have stuff here. Let's see. If we have a directory entry ID, and let's see if we have the inode ID. See if we have these things. Info registers is what this stuff is here. So that's why it looks the same, info registers. So we have 10 and 10. Well, they both found 10. So actually that should be okay. We have valid values for both, and since there's 11 files, 10 would be zero-based. Yeah, the offset for that. That does seem right. But it's not loading it to the kernel address. There's no data at one meg, right? Print what? I guess x10. Yeah, there's no data at one meg, so I don't think it's loading it there. This kernel address is one meg here. The font address is D, so we could check if it loads the font. If I'm not going crazy, we could check what um, font's at D000, because I might not be using the monitor correctly here. Six. Yeah, let's just uh, load 20 uh, double words at D. Well, that's not any data either, although it starts with a space, so. 
I don't think I'm using this right. <laughs> do I have to do dollar? No, that's not a register. Maybe it's not loading anything. I don't know what I'm doing. I might cut the video here because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and it's been an hour, so yeah. I'll get back and try to add a little bit more if I find out why it's not booting, and I'll, uh, I'll get back then. Spending too much time on this right now. Well, I did find the issue, and I'll tell you what it was. Pretty, pretty simple. If I look inside of the implementation for the file system, you'll notice I have this super block T super block declared. And I found this out because I set, you know, well, not breakpoints, I guess effectively breakpoints <laughs> by halting within this loop and it did not work, it triple faulted. And outside of this loop, I did halt correctly and I could look at values and stuff. And I'm using, I changed to use the direct X tense per I node here, as well as these sort of constant values. And within the third stage, bootloader, where I'm loading the kernel and the font and everything, I had, is it still here? It's not here. Because <laughs> I got rid of it, yeah. I had, a, I had a pointer to the super block called super block. So that was the same name, and I think that, I'm not sure what takes priority, but I think that's called shadowing. So some shadowing rules were implicitly invoked, and it was, I think, using this pointer instead of the other one, or this, that, or the other. I think it was trying to use the super block defined within FS impl. However, that doesn't have data until the kernel is ran later on. So at that point, it was trying to access the X tense per I node. Yeah, the direct X tense per I node in the super block, and it didn't have any data, it was all zeros. So I think that's why it was erroring out and triple faulting, trying to jump to data that wasn't there, or load data that wasn't there on the disk or something. So yeah, I'm loading that data now, the thing defined within FS impl, I'm taking the data from a super block T sized area of memory at the super block address. Don't use the pointer, use the thing we defined in there. <laughs> Same thing down here, super block arrow, first data block times eight, that's what it was. Now I'm using the dot because it's not a pointer anymore. Using the other one. And we also have eights here, which could be um, sectors per block. Is it file system sectors? Don't remember. It's just sectors per block, yeah. You figure that would be here. Now it is. <laughs> sectors per block. So this is now big. So read write sectors, sectors per block. Super block T, first data times that. And I'm just putting these down so I can read it better. Okay. So that does load the kernel and the font and everything now, whereas it wasn't before. And I don't remember, I don't think I have any more debugging breaks. So this should go on and it'll load. And we can print and everything works like normal. We don't have any memory leaks, I hope. 28515, nope. Okay, so that was fun. <laughs> I messed with memory a bit, but it wasn't memory. And I took out the uh, debug monitoring for CPU reset, but that's all I did. It's a shadowing. I think there's a, a warning for that though. I don't know if I can get GCC to tell me like, um, I guess I don't have the docs for those. <laughs> to tell me what all warnings I can do, but I think I can do that. No pointer sign. I think it's, I don't know if it's called shadowing. We'll see. Probably not. Did you mean shadow? Well, if you know what I meant, why don't you fill it out, right? Right? Shadow, that dog from Homeward Bound, that's exactly what I mean. Or the hedgehog. Could, could also be that. Hey, I have some shadow declarations in places. That might cause issues later. Of course, these are PD entry. I thought the other ones were PT entry or something. Shadow's a previous local. So those might be things I want to look at that I'll put in my notes. Right now, I might not mess with them, but those would be good to look at. So let's get rid of those there. Let me put things in. Let me put it to do in the make file. <laughs> That's always fun. Add flag w shadow. Check for shadowed variables. Add pedantic or w pedantic. 
for extra warnings for non uh, C standard compliance. So I will go through those maybe on another another video next part if I don't break things too much on this one. We'll see. But with those, it still compiles and it still boots. It just takes a second. And I'll also check for Clang. And it works on here as well. Get these same results, which is always nice. Usually that does not happen. The exact same result as far as memory use and things. So, okay. All right, so we can go on and I'll try to do create file now that we have some other things going on. So let's look at syscalls in our interrupts here. If we go syscall open, these, these values do update from the kernel. I did test that, but I can show that here right quick. Actually, that wouldn't be too bad to show. I could do that. If we set something here, We'll do debugging, and we'll say we mess with FD or flags. Well, one of these extern things, right? Let's say our current open files equals like 777, just so that we can change these things here. I guess I don't want to mess with the things that are bad, though. Yeah, let's just say that, just to check that one of these can, uh, can uh, change, and then we'll return. Can move FD to there and return. So in the kernel, wherever I'm actually doing stuff down here, before we do this, we'll just debug right here. I'll put a halt in. Uh, cafe beef. And we'll say B will be the current open files. So when we first initialize things before this point, current open files is three. I'm updating it within the open syscall, so I will have to call open. Let's call open. And we'll just say int test fd open not a file or read only. It wouldn't exist anyway, but FD should be negative one. So that's what we're moving into EAX and it's initialized the negative one up here. So we'll just make sure that says that that does not work undeclared. That's what I get. Unused variable, yes, it is explicitly. FD is undeclared because it's test FD. Can't even do my debugging correctly, dang it. All right, so we got the load. We know it printed out here and it stopped. So that is good. So we say cafe beef. So 309. Oh, uh, I don't remember what that is. <laughs> is that 256 times three plus nine? So that's 512 plus 256, which is seven. 68 plus 9, which is 777. So yeah, that's true. And then this is negative 1 and hex unsigned. It's all Fs. So that looks correct. So the value does update. It's not 3, right? Which is what I'm trying to show. Which does make sense. I just, I had to prove it to myself first, right? Because the things are global. These are X turn in here, but they're global. And that file is linked in with the kernel as part of its, as part of the kernel's translation unit. Translation unit, yeah. So these are here, they have sort of global storage or whatever, stack duration, and they are affected. So I know it's obvious, I just, I had to show that to myself. Otherwise I didn't believe it. <laughs> so it's okay with updating those in there. And I forgot if I said, yeah, I am updating these down here. Some of those, okay. So just remove that to do, cause I showed it. I could do basic math in my head if I take a minute. So what are we doing here? I want to create the file, write everything, helper function, I did do that. So parent inode would be 
It's um, inode for name and directory. Parent inode from path. That's why I did that. Parent inode from path, given whatever our path is. File path. And we can make something that is fs create file given that file path. I guess we don't need the parent inode. We can determine that within create file. I actually don't need that. So we'll just do this. This does not exist, but we will make that. And I got to reopen that again. So we'll make fs create file, and that'll return an inode. It looks like inode t. Put that up above my face a bit. So create a file in the file system. A new file. Given a path. Mm, file path, we'll just say path. And by default, if all goes wrong, we're not going to return anything. Well, it'll be zero. If we couldn't make a file, it'll be zero, which would be bad. But uh, I guess I can check that right after. If file inode ID is zero, error could not create a file. Could not create file. Maybe the path was wrong or some other thing, but we could not create this file. Maybe they're doing make directory dash p or something, and we don't have that enabled, <laughs> so we don't have you know creating all the directories in between or something. Creating a directory would be something. I guess we'll have to call that. We might make wrappers around this function later if we were to create multiple files in a row, like multiple directories. You know, like uh, I don't think Windows needs the p; it creates them automatically. But on Linux, I think you need the p usually if they don't exist. So let's say we have folder A, but we want to make folder B and folder C in order to make file D, right? Currently, I'm probably going to have it to where this doesn't work and it errors out if that doesn't exist or something. Because we'll try to get the parent directory and it won't exist or something like that. But later on, we can make like a make directory command, which calls like functions, and it'll wrap this create file as it walks the path and finds a missing inode. It'll make a new directory file, and then continue, make a new one, then continue, and then make this one finally. So that might be something we do later. Just thinking things through. But right now, we'll just say, hey, this is an error. We could not make it. We'll do this. So file doesn't exist. Flags does have ocreate, create the file, and all that. Just put that there. Was that the last thing we needed to do <laughs> inside of syscall? I have to-dos down here. I mean, I should do realloc and calloc, but I think that's all I have to do for this. Okay. Assuming the rest of it works, which it won't because it's me, but... That's negative thinking we don't need right now. Okay, so we need to create a file. Including new inode, updating inode bitmap blocks, and data bitmap blocks. We'll just say new inode, updating inode bitmap blocks, data bitmap blocks, inode, yeah, inode blocks, data blocks for new file and data blocks, which will involve updating the super block probably. Yeah, we'll probably need to also update super block. And if we create it with O directory, then we can make, you know, the initial data dot and dot dot. But how would we know that in here? I guess we don't have the flags, do we? We're supposed to make a new file. We could pass it flags, but later on we might 
be in a situation where we don't have where we don't have flags for the thing. Yeah, I might need something else for creating a directory. <laughs> this is this will be creating like a plain file, not a directory. But if we use like a make directory command or something later, we might need something to make a directory. So make a directory. Yeah, let's just put that there. We can return an inode for it or something later. Make dir. Put this here, create a new directory file. And if this ends up being redundant and we put the data within this function, that's fine. I'll just lay this out so I know that I was supposed to do it at one point. Data blocks um, slash directories initial data will be directory entries for dot and dot dot. But also we'll need to do for that, so, okay. So what are we doing here? We have a path, so let's get parent directory of file at path. We know it doesn't exist, but we know the parent directory should exist, whether it's root or something else. See, parent directory will equal inode, well, parent inode. Parent inode from path, path. If parent directory, we could just call it parent inode, so I don't have to think. Switch between inode and directory in my head. If this ID is zero, we did not find it. We'll do this. Yeah. Did not find containing directory error. And I'll probably just return this regardless though. I hate that it does this. I really do. I need to turn that off. <laughs> I hate doing that. So what do we do? We have to add the file as a directory entry to the parent inode. I know I have to do that and update the parent inode's data as well as probably the super blocks data if that adds another block <laughs> to the parent, which that's annoying. Then we have to find the next free block, set that as in use, possibly expand or look for free data blocks on the disk and add those into the extents to the parent's inode. That's annoying. But updating just the plain inode values like the size and even just adding to current blocks that have enough free data for another directory entry, that's not too bad. But then we also need to make a new inode for this file. Let's set this stuff out. So make new inode for file. We probably want the name as well. We're giving it a path. We're not necessarily giving it, you know, just a plain name here. Although if we do, we can assume that we're in the current directory which is something I'm not considering if I call this function with that. We're assuming we're here. We are in the current directory. Inode for name in the current directory. We won't find it, but the current inode will be a directory, so we'll return that. So that should be okay, actually. If we're looking for something at the path, if we give this a path of just a file name, I'm trying to think if that will cause errors for this. So we don't start with this. We don't start with this. We don't start with this. We just have like a name. We get the name until we reach null. And we get the inode for name in directory. So we'd be searching the current inode for that name and we should return it. Okay, so that should be all right actually. 
We should return that. That should be okay. All right. Just making sure. I think that'll be all right. Another part of this will be add new directory entry for file to parent inode. And we'll say, you know, update rest of parent inodes data, i.e. size, size and bytes, blocks, uh, extent info, I don't know, extent length blocks as needed, etc. Update super block info if needed. I'm not sure if it's needed. I think it might be though. So we'll have to allocate stuff and do all this and write it to disk. We'll have to write it to disk as well. We'll have to add it to the open inode table probably. Although it's not open, so not necessarily. We're making a file. Well, now if we call it from open, then it will be. It will be added to the open ino table, right? We don't have to do it within this function. I think that's only within the open syscall. Right, if it doesn't exist, we make it, and then we put it in the open ino table. And if it doesn't exist, it won't be in the open ino table. So that's okay. Yeah, so we don't have to do that here. So we have the parent inode. Um, okay, well, let's just make a new inode for the file then. <laughs> Right, new inode to disk. So that means also updates, data blocks and things as needed, which would be the inode blocks as well. Maybe I do that before I do this. Hard to know all the exact steps until I'm actually doing it. Date inode bitmap blocks. Because we'll, we will have to do this and set another bit in use for the new inode and the new one initial block of data and the data bitmap. We could lazily do this stuff if, I if it was more complex and I was smarter. <laughs> we could say, okay, we haven't actually written anything to the file. The size would be zero. It doesn't need to take up any data on the disk. It could all stay in memory even. Uh, but I'm just going to write everything to disk at a minimum size of one block just to be simpler. So this will be for new file, inode. For new file, update inode blocks. For new file, update data blocks. For new file, data will be empty by default. Down here, if we do something different and duplicate things for make directory or have a wrapper or something, then that will add, you know, the directory entries. But for just a new file we're making, we haven't written anything to it. So it'll be empty by default. Then if we haven't done so as part of these, I'll write the inode to disk. I guess that would be part of updating the inode blocks though. So I probably won't have to do it there. We'll add directory entry and update the parent inode. So let's say this is update file system info for new inode. And let's say update file system info for parent inode, parent directory inode. Just copy this, update inode bitmap blocks. We won't have to do that. Data bitmap blocks we may if it takes up extra data. In parent directory if it takes up another block of data from adding new directory entry. So update the inode blocks for parent dir inode. Because the size, at a minimum, the size will increase. So we might have to set that and cascade changes from there. Update data blocks for a new file. For parent inode by adding new directory entry. 
Um, and I guess we'll do that as part of that. Update the rest of the data if needed. I'll just do any, any remaining data of parent inode. I don't know if I need any others, but we'll just do this just in case. I'll have a catch all if needed. Super block info. I don't know yet if I need to. I think I will though, if I update the bitmap blocks, because that data is contained within the super block. So at least for bitmap, inode data bitmap info. Uh, if not others, <laughs> if not other stuff. Okay. So I think loosely that's a game plan here. Inode T, new inode. Empty by default, right? So we'll have to fill it in with data. I probably want to set the name. I'll need the name for the directory entry later. And if they don't give just a plain name for the file path, I'll have to get that. So I might make another tiny helper function to grab the last uh, file name from a path stream. We won't really be traversing it for relative references, although I guess I could, no. Yeah, we can't just create a relative name. I mean, we could create dot or dot dot. So we probably want to prevent that from happening. <laughs> let's, uh, let's do that, actually. Bad special cases. Maybe I'll have a, a catch-all error handling validation function later on, but right now I might have to handle that separately within all these. Yeah, we want to not, we want to disallow dot and dot dot. Dot and dot dot. Because some prankster could try to do that and they're going to break their system somehow because that's not going to be great. So if string compare path dot and I want it to be the length of the path probably, so let's do this. Dot length of path. And we want to return I know T zero, that's not good. We could say or, oh yeah, we can make it an or condition, or not string compare dot dot for string length of the given path. And we'll do that. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Pranksters, always getting up to no good. Make new inode for files. What initial info do we want to give it? Well, we do want to make the thing to grab the name, so let's do that. We can return a pointer, I guess. No, we don't want to allocate a new pointer, do we? We'll probably just return a pointer in the path that we would do that with. Probably would do that, right? And I'll need that later. So let's say character file name equals last name and path, given the path. And we'll return a character pointer. We'll have uh, position will equal the path, and we got to cast the const away, but we're not going to be messing with it, so it's not too bad. So while position not equal null, I guess, and then we could go. We could go backwards. I don't have string r character. That might be something to add. You know, we could have. Position equals string r character, which I think returns the last position. Turns a pointer to the last occurrence of the character c in the string s. So if I make that, then we would search for the last position, which I didn't read what uh, the, the argument order is, parameter order, constant character s and c. We'd have path and this function. So we would get start of last 
We'd, we'd, we'd get the position right before the last thing in the path, I guess. What if we gave it, like, root? Well, we don't want to create root either. Disallow creating files with special names. I'll just say that. It's going to be painful if we have slash. We don't want to allow the slash either. Because if it was just slash, but yeah, we don't want to allow creating names of that. That would be bad. So we want to get the start of last name. And I guess we would just return that, wouldn't we? It'd be this plus one. And if it's null, then we passed in a null, right? Or it could be one. If this is null, this could be one. So maybe not, maybe not do that. Let's say if star position. Well, yeah, if we did find that, if position, position plus plus. So do end of last directory in path, start of last name in path. So that would be all right. We can do that, assuming I make this function okay. And return position. Assuming that was right, we would get that, the position from the last name to the end of the null. Hopefully that would be okay, because I'll use that later for the directory entry. We'll use later for directory entry name. So let's make that string. I think I have string character. I don't have string character. Interesting. We can make those. I should be doing more like doc string type things anyway for these, but oh well. Turn pointer to first occurrence of character C in, uh, in string. Of course, it's given an int, but I'm not going to do an int because I'm dumb and don't know what I'm doing. And also, I was going to say, if these are strings, it should be character. So I don't know. I might change these from UNAT pointers to character later. It's technically, they're going to be strings for a lot of them. That might fix up is issues later. I'm not sure, but that's all right. I'll we'll have string character given constant character pointer string and character C. Right now, I'll just return null or zero. And I'll do string r character, turn pointer to last occurrence of character and string. So let's have a pointer. We'll have it be character pointer to string. Otherwise, it'll complain if we use string directly, probably because it's a const. If I'm checking the data at string, I guess if I'm not, it's OK. But So while p not equal c, and I could say while p and p not equal c, or I could do, yeah, while p not equal null and p not equal c, p plus plus, turn p. That's the first time it occurs. So let's say while p while what yeah, while we still have a thing to search for. Cuz that wouldn't that would only return um well that would be the first occurrence, wouldn't it? Never mind. No, that would be the first. I'm not I'm not doing the last one yet. Yeah. If it equals c, it would return p. Otherwise it would go to l equals null and return a null. I don't, I, I feel like this is wrong somehow, but I'm going to say that's okay right now. The last occurrence would probably be similar, but different, so not similar. I want to do if 
p equals c. Probably needs something else here. Let's do result equals null right now. If p equals c, result equals p. And then do that. Would that work? Return result. So while we're going through the string, just set to the start of this, we'll iterate through all the characters. If we find the character, we set result to that position, but we're going to keep going on until we reach the end of the string. And then we'll return that result. So this is, I mean, these are both O of N for going through the string potentially, but I'm not sure if you can get much better than that. You can probably get, you can probably get shorter. I mean, you'd, you'd need to know the length though. So we'd have to search through the whole string to get the length regardless. But if you did have a length or a better string implementation with the length, then you could do this better, right? You could binary search or what have you for, a, for the character within the string, because the string's just an array of characters. So you can probably do something like that. Or some better way of doing this, I don't know. Check if the length is zero or not in return, stuff like that. But uh, I feel like these, would, these are wrong. I do feel like these are wrong, but we can have test cases set up. I don't trust myself, right, you know? <laughs> Definitely feel like those are wrong, but okay. I should get the last name in the path because we'll find the final slash, go right after that and get the null or whatever's contained in there. I guess we can check somehow if it returns null, but I'll check that here. If not file name. So file was not, or I guess no, no final name in path or other error. Update info for new inode. We could set the data here for this. Before I forget, let me set something up in the kernel. I can test those because I have string in here, right? Yeah, right there. Let me just do this here. Debugging. Test string character and string r character functions. There's one other thing I was gonna do before this, and I forget what it was. Oh, look at what the inode um, values are. The struct. The big old inode struct here. Let's get this out here. Journals there. Okay. So we know we need a new ID. So we need to get new <laughs> ID for, for file for inode. And that would be searching like for the next free inode bit, I think. So let's get next free inode bit. That would be the ID. And subsequently, set that bit as in use and set next free inode bit. Get next free inode bit, use as new ID, inode ID. But we can also do the type right now. So new inode type equals file type file, size and bytes. I mean, we could do the size is going to be zero, but still allocate like a block for it. That would be okay. It would still have a block on the disk, right? It just wouldn't have any data within that block. But we might probably do want to change that later on because we're going to have a bunch of like empty files and crap on the disk, which would not be great. Um, these will be zero, right? Because we set them to zero already. I can't have the last modified timestamp be sort of the creation date. So that would be okay. I probably should have like stuff to set a new date and everything too, but. Last modified timestamp. So that'll equal, let's say, file system. I think it's date time, not timestamp. 
file system date time t and we would get that from some area in memory i don't remember is it in the global address we have timer ticks yeah rtc date time area i guess i want to affect that <laughs> Maybe I'll have a, a function to do that. I mean, technically that's in the file system, right? So there's probably is data still at there. We, we want to change these later. Let's make even another one. I'm, I'm going to make just so many helper functions. You won't even believe it. <laughs> but get, uh, get timestamp, get current, get current timestamp. We'll just say, and call it date time now. <laughs> Uh, FS date time T, right? FS date time T, or current timestamp, whatever. It's not a full timestamp, but I guess it works. Takes in nothing and just returns that. So let's return FS date time T. Let's return the data given a timestamp pointer to RTC date time area. Maybe that'll error because I'm not supposed to touch that data at this point at runtime. I don't know. We'll see. That one can probably be inline, but the, the compiler will probably inline that for us. So we'll see. The modified timestamp would be, because this reads a lot better, current, current timestamp. That just reads a lot better in my opinion. So the extents, the extents will be zero. It doesn't really have a block on the disk, but we probably do want to find a block on the disk and set it there in case we write to the file after this point, which we probably will. Reference count will be zero. Probably don't need indirects because we'll only have one block potentially at most we'd need to mess with right now. So extent zero dot first block, what would that be? That equals something, but the length in blocks would equal one. So the first block, we would need to find the next free data block probably. We'd have to do this actually. Get new free data block for first extent first x tense, first block in inode. So this, instead of the inode bit, this would be the next free data bit. Because that's the actual data that's on the disk is what this x tent is referring to. Next free data bit, use as x tent zero, first block value, set that bit as unused, set next free data bit. This would probably, I think this updates the super block is what these two things do. And we set the next one. So the super block, we're keeping track of the first free inode and data bits. So I could name these next free, that might make more sense instead of the first one, unless I have a free list of bits or something. But right now this just means the next or the first found zero bit within the inode bitmap and the data bitmap. So those values are what we'll be updating when we're setting these next bits. So we can take those for this and update them here. I'll do that here actually. New inode ID will equal super block dot first free inode bit, because that is the, I guess, one base value or zero base value, but I know zero is invalid. So it's the bit number itself, if it's like 20, that means 20 was the first free bit in the bitmap, and that's also the ID of this inode. But that's in use in inode bitmap blocks. This will be a to-do. This I did already. F 
find and set next free inode bit, this update super block. So we'll have that as this first block value, then that'll be good. So that'll be super block dot first free data bit. Free data bit, set that bit as in use. This will be to do, and this will be to do. Find and set. So we'll need a couple of other functions somewhere similar to the physical memory map where we're checking for the next free blocks in the bitmap. We'll use similar stuff, similar logic for finding the next free block, the next free bit. Well, same thing within the inode and data bitmaps. But those bits should also be. The bit numbers will be the ID for the inode, and they'll also be offsets within the inode and data blocks, not just bitmaps. So that's good. Might make some finding logic easier later with that. So do the first block and length of blocks. We do have to do this though. But that's all the new data that we'd need. We just have extraneous stuff here that we have to do. But as far as the new inode data, I think that's it. We just set the ID the type, the length, it doesn't have any data yet, so the size is going to be zero from initializing it here. I'll try to do as much of this as I can, I guess, within this hour. Or I might call it here, we'll see. Update inode bitmap blocks for new file. So that would be here. Data bitmap block would be here. Inode bitmap block would be here. Update the inode blocks, I do have to do that, and the data blocks. Although we haven't written to there yet, we're just marking the bitmaps. So we probably don't have to update the data because there's no data there yet. It will be empty by default. So update the blocks for new, yeah, we will have to do that, and then the parents stuff as well. Okay. And we have the parent inode. We do need to write it to disk as well, though, which will be within the inode blocks. That'll be doing this. This will write to disk for the new inode and the parent inode down here. These will both write to disk. Is there anything else I need to do? I'm trying to think. <laughs> it's not working out too well. I have a game plan. I may just call it here because I only have like 10 more minutes in this hour. I may just call it here and think over this stuff a bit. Eh, a bit. Because I'll need to set more bits as in use. I'll need to do other things. And there's a lot involved here. I'll be reading and writing to temp sectors and blocks, I'm sure. And I'll just lay this out a little bit better in my mind with some maybe physical notes as well. Get a clear head for next time. And we'll try to tackle and maybe hopefully get most or all of this done for creating a file in the next one. And then open will be done uh, for the open syscall. We can try and test that out and then move on to close in the other ones. So yeah, hopefully I can get this done the next one. We've had a maybe three or so parts here or more where I'm not doing too much. Sorry about that. I can try to leave off on a, a better note and see if we can test some stuff here. String char, string character and R character. We can print out those values. So let's say we return a position, which would be a pointer, and I don't have a percent %p, right? <laughs> which is what you're supposed to do for these things traditionally. I could set just a value here, though. Probably would not be great. I could set a character and see if it equals the character we're looking for, or if it equals nothing. Well, we can set um, x. Let's just set x. We'll set the hex value. And if that equals the ASCII value of the character, maybe that'll be okay, or we can do C. I don't know. We'll, we'll try this. So string character, let's say the first occurrence uh, in test for t, right? So it should be zero, I think. Let's just say we're given an int, although it prints out a pointer. Let's just cast that to an int, I guess. <laughs> That's not going to be good. Yeah, it's not going to do that. Um, 
let's say the character at that position. And then we can print the character, right? That returns a character pointer. Let's say we return the character. So that should print like a T. Of course, we're not going to be able to test these things very well. That should also print a T, but that's like basic testing here. Stream character test T. String R character test T is not very good. Redefinition. I meant casting, you know what I meant. This thing knew, knows what I mean, right? I meant casting that. No, that's taking, that's taking the data. Previous declaration. Oh, I called it the same thing. Yeah. Well, I'm a dork, I do that sometimes. This, the second one is string R character, duh. It's not gonna work with the same name. Implicit declaration, I did. Position equals string R char. 205 and FS impl. Nice. I did call it that, there we go. Fix that, make sure that's spelled correctly. Last name and path. Variable set but not used. Unused parameter, yep, because I'm not using this function yet. Variable set but not used. Um, it's fine. New inode set but not used, 233. This, I am setting the values, aren't I? Um, okay. Well, I would be returning the new inode, actually. There we go, that'll set it as used. That's ultimately what I'll be returning from this. There we go. Uh, well, yeah, I didn't do slash r slash n, I just did slash n, and it did return a t. I mean, that's something. It's not the best test. <laughs> Really, <laughs> but it is a test. We could return a string because it returns the position, right? So let's do that. Let's return the string. So that way this will say test. Our character should just, should just have a T. That would be a better thing. Um, and we'll have String character, let's say I. And I'll test for that again. If we're testing for T within this, we should have T-I-N-G. Null. Uh, I'm probably returning it and I didn't I didn't type it right. So test and T, test and T is not correct. Let's string R character. I should return a pointer, a character pointer. This one's T, that's correct. So test and T. That is correct. It was supposed to be I. I need to do testing. I am full of it today. Okay. So the first edition of T starts at T, so it gives T S T. The last one's T, just gives that. Testing turns the position of the I, and this returns position of the last T, which is T I N G. Yeah. Okay, that looks correct, so that's good. That is correct. I shouldn't have to mess with that as a basic test. Uh, but that's all I'm gonna do on this. Yeah, so. I will try to get to more of create file on the next part. Hopefully some of this has been, I'm not gonna say entertaining, but it's somewhat valuable or enjoyable to somebody. Just trying to walk through all my thoughts here. It's a lot, it's a lot to go over. It's not in the abstract when you, you know, sit down and focus and take your time. 
if you're trying to talk at the same time and badly program, it is it is a lot. So but that's all right. New new frontiers, right? I've done this before, but I'm trying to do it a little bit better than I used to and have more functions and stuff to help out. So hopefully it gets easier as we go. And this is one of the worst ones. But it doesn't seem too bad. We'll just need some more functions for setting and finding free bits within a bitmap, within a chunk of bytes, just seeing which bytes have bits that aren't one effectively doing that for the inode and data bitmaps. So maybe a general function to do that uh, for either just a generic block of data, find the next bit, which we have within the physical memory manager. I could abstract that, I guess, if needed. We'll see. And then it's reading and writing to disk for inodes and data and stuff. So hopefully that's not too bad, but I'll give it some thought and get back to this. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. And uh, cheers. I'm going to enjoy some pineapple rum tonight. Warm up a little bit. Tropical.